you can see by our results, we had a very strong fourth quarter. We've, uh, in, in uh, 2017, we reversed the trend of declining unit revenues. We're looking for positive unit revenue growth uh, here in 2018. Uh, fuel prices are up a little bit this year, which uh, quite frankly to me is more of an issue than uh, some of the concerns over the industry capacity. But we're very well hedged um, and looking forward to expanding our margins, expanding our return on capital uh, in 2018. So um, we're off to a good start and I'm, I'm really looking forward to a great year. You had mentioned that fuel costs being up this year perhaps is, is an emerging concern. Also said maybe not uh, too concerned about added capacity and price wars. In the past, when fuel has been more expensive, the market took it as, a, as a, an opportunity to say, well, maybe that's going to take the pressure off some of the price wars. Do you see that dynamic playing out? Or if, if not yet, at what fuel price might that happen? Well, I think that is an excellent point. Uh, it puts a lot of pressure, especially on our competitors, because they don't have the low cost structure that we do. They don't have the hedging program that we have. And they're just a lot more exposed to uh, increased prices. You know, energy prices are up 20 percent uh, over the last several months. Uh, so, yeah, that could translate into uh, uh, to uh, 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 more uh, capacity uh, restraint. Who knows? But. I, I was really referring to Southwest and our concerns about uh, our competitors' capacity. We're very well prepared to compete. Uh, we have a great plan for 2018. We're looking forward to continuing positive unit revenue trends, even with this competitive capacity threat. Uh, we've got uh, a great outlook for our unit costs for the year. And of course, a very significant benefit for Southwest, who's a full taxpayer from this tax reform. So. Uh, we're good to go and good to compete uh, no matter what. Uh, you know, Mr. Kelly, on tax reform itself, uh, you say, of course, the reduction in the statutory rate will result in hundreds of millions in tax savings. And of course, like so many companies, boost your earnings this year. But what are your expectations next year and the year after? There are some who believe a lot of the benefits we're seeing near term will be competed away. Is that how you're sort of expecting things to go? You know, uh, no, and I think um, as evidence, I would just point to recent history. Uh, fuel prices relative to 2012 for us uh, means a lower fuel bill, uh, you know, just, just the fuel cost reduction for 2017 of over $2 billion a year. And uh, we haven't competed all of those savings away. We've had record returns on capital. We've had record levels of shareholder returns. And I think the same logic would extend now to uh, tax reform. Uh, it certainly puts us in a position where our costs uh, after tax are lower. It, it allows us to have a firmer commitment to keeping our fares low. Um, and we'll, we'll use that money to uh, share with our employees, in addition to keeping our fares low for our customers, invest more uh, in aircraft and, um, and we'll have an opportunity to further reward our shareholders as well. So uh, no, I, I don't think it will be competed away and certainly our investors uh, by their reaction with our stock price don't think it's going to be competed right. away. Right, but I guess the point is the investments you're just referring to you believe will actually bring growth consistent with your expectations uh, and not see margin uh, margin erosion as a result? We're looking at margin expansion uh, here in 2018. So that is with the benefit of the tax reform, uh, all baked in. Uh, we haven't added to our uh, capacity. Uh, as an example, in 2018, we'll be growing in the 5%, low 5% range, uh, 5. X percent. Uh, we'll end this year with around 750 aircraft. So. Our growth plans are unchanged, at least in the near term. Now, if demand picks up uh, because of tax reform, if we get an economic lift, we'll be in a position where we can grow faster. Uh, but if you assume that our uh, tax savings in 2018 are roughly $500 million, uh, it'll depend on our earnings, of course, but if, if you assume $500 million, we're not gonna invest immediately $500, 500 million dollars to grow the airline. That's ridiculous. So um, it, it, there's an array of things that we can do with that money uh, and we'll put it to very, very good use. Hey Gary, people uh, zeroed in on 
uh, salaries, wages, and benefits up 12 plus. Is that a number we should get used to going into further quarters? You know, there's a lot of noise in the background. I'm not sure I totally heard, heard all of your question, but um, uh, in terms of salaries, wages, and benefits, and the benefit that tax reform provides for us, it just puts us in a more prosperous position uh, where we can continue to take care of our employees so that they can take great care of our customers. We'll pay, we're 85% unionized, and of course, uh, wage rates are negotiated, so that's not anything that will happen unilaterally. And, um, you know, there are other threats in, in our business, whether it's recession or fuel price increases, so there's a lot more to it than just our tax rate in thinking about uh, our prosperity going forward. But it certainly puts us in a position where we can share more with our employees, and we have done that. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.